there is no melia code between prelims and mains and whatever facts you study in prelims for any person creating as a change agent in the particular society we get if we rely only upon the current affairs magazine or any other uh, skewed preparation whereas concentrating on one subject which is they think as very important so these days essays have been very scary for many students people keep coming up and saying that uh, ma'am there have been uh, 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 thematic essays previously there have been uh, technical essays nowadays everything is abstract and philosophical or proverbial based we are kind of very scared uh, we can handle gs questions uh, but essay is scary for many so for you vignesh was essay a phobia was it scary or were you able to manage what was it for you no ma'am it was not a phobia it was a philic i would say it's because uh, i used to uh, get into the philosophical essays especially uh, from my attempt which was 2022 since then the gs base essays was almost died down and almost 7 out of 8 essays are only philosophical essays and uh, what i see philosophical essays are advantages is that you need very less preparation when it comes to philosophical essays it's all about practicing philosophical essays especially when it comes to uh, gs base essays you need to uh, do some thematic area work or based on the pyq and you will need to collect some unique notes which differentiates your essay from others whereas for the philosophical essays that's not the that's not the way instead we will be brainstorming and collecting examples from what you already know especially uh, we have studied more examples when it comes to post independence history world history and other parts of the history and we have some good examples when it comes to polity it's all about trusting that you already know the content for the essay but the problem is that you have to take the content out of the brainstorming and then link it to the particular topic and make a coherent structure based on it and it comes all about only sheer practice for for me essay notes only had a set of quotes which i by heart and and second uh, there are some value addition from the papers which are not very much gs based examples but uh, uh, essay worthy examples i would say based on some case studies which are uh, very much uh, uh, what to say attractive to the particular evaluator which is very much unique so that we can connect it to the essay even if you don't have any such value additions definitely we already know some anecdotes or some areas of the history which we can directly connect so it's all about more practicing brainstorming and uh, getting a beautiful say out of it i think i still have the essay phobia man so for me uh, i always see essay as a movie man for i feel as a mo- I mean if a movie is good it means all things went fine in essay too i feel uh, like in the first two pages where we introduce the essay topic and last two pages where we conclude the essay topic are very important apart from the regular body we follow so in the initial days my essay used to be very mechanical i would say i will intentionally force uh, uh, different areas for example science sci- scientific technological or environment examples i intentionally force them so and when i shift from one topic to other topic it is easily visible that this guy is forcing it so then i understood that screenplay is very important as in a movie so then i started focusing more on the flow of the content how i present each idea so when i started doing that i reduced number of view points i put in the essay topic previously i used to write 5 to 10 different angles i slowly reduced them i went on elaborating them in not very detailed not very brief uh, there is a mix of both a, a kind of a decent explanation of every view point then i slowly focus on shifting from one view point to other view point so narrative counter narrative and then in the recent exam a mentor told me also provide solutions if possible even in the essay too. that could be the easiest way to conclude because i always have the problem of concluding the essay last one page i don't know what right i'll summarize i'll do whatever i want and many evaluators tell that first eight page is very good and last two page could have been better and like in a movie the climax is the deciding part we come out only remembering the climax of the movie so then i started focusing on the conclusion part so when i started uh, working on the introduction the anecdotes or the stories and uh, focusing on conclusion the flow of essay greatly improved and i scored around 120 this year which is a pretty decent score so the more emphasis should be on how the essay is flowing rather than just the viewpoints no i agree with what vignesh and krishna said phobia i didn't have a phobia but i definitely had a fear because i was very good in writing technical essays like my attempt till 2020 my essay score used to be 129 130 in that range 
so that was the time when there were one at least one technical essay to compensate for my lack in the philosophical essay because i am someone who cannot reproduce quotes as such into the paper like 10 quotes memorizing 10 quotes and reproducing them as such was a very tedious process which i was able to do till my 2020 attempt but due to lack of time or i don't know how i uh, mishandled it but this time i couldn't i couldn't do that particular exercise completely so i was actually uh, with fear what i'm going to do but i had a thing like it had to be worked upon so shivashank i should actually thank shivashankar sir because he know he like told me don't worry don't fear you will get nothing out of getting scared of it so he used to send me uh, like uh, essays of all the toppers and he told me try to emulate them and he gave me certain tips he asked me like can't you remember even one quote i said maximum two quotes i can remember he said two quotes for every topic you should remember then i was like no sir it is a bit difficult for me so he told let us try to manage with whatever you can so write coherently give, try to give more examples compensate for that by giving uh, more examples uh, writing like how we said the screenplay is very important so i didn't expect any mark uh, in three digit to be very honest i didn't ex- expect an a uh, three digit mark in essay because i know what is my strength and weakness and essay is not particularly my strength so uh, one thing that i would say to aspirants is if you have this fear try to push it with the rational thought do whatever you can but still my mains written score was 810 even with that essay like with that fear i was able to score because i focused whatever i lo- lost in essay i wanted to focus on with gs and optional so trying to do whatever you you can with whatever you have is more important when you are handling such fears man it is okay it is fine like and that danus varada padipa vaavana evdi varana enak varala like till the last i tried my it's not like for a lack of trying so i would tell people is try try your best even after that it doesn't come it is fine manage with whatever you have and try to focus more on your strengths push in your strengths so that you get a very good decent written score it's not a problem for me ma'am uh, with respect to essay i don't I didn't have any essay phobia because i have perfect strategy with respect to uh, essay writing everything ma'am so i was eager to learn the art of uh, writing an essay uh, in uh, in my previous uh, moksha thesis ma'am my uh, my essay mark used to hover around uh, 70 to 80 however in 2023 test series ma'am i got around 120 to 130 so the thing is i understood how to write an perfect essay because I, rather than t- uh, telling a perfect essay we can tell it's a decent essay and i scored around 116 marks in essay this year which actually pre- uh, pretty good marks ma'am the first thing in with respect to essay writing is that ma'am having a perfect uh, brainstorming in the first 30 minutes i used to have a per- uh, perfect brainstorm with respect to introduction conclusion and also body of the essay i used to have around 30 uh, dimensions uh, which is a template one and i used to fit the templates which are necessary with respect to that uh, given topic and uh, with after the 30 minutes when i start to write the answer with uh, uh, with respect to the essay i used to think that the uh, since there are two essays i should k- give introduction so distinctively with respect to the uh, two ma'am first if i start and uh, uh, like uh, to give a story with res- uh, as introduction first essay i used to give a question based introduction with respect to second essay and the second thing is that ma'am having a perfect uh, transition and coherence is uh, response is like very 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 mandatory in order to maintain a perfect amount of flow with respect to essay so this makes the uh, evaluator to keep in line what with what we needs to ten- intend to tell with respect to the uh, examiner ma'am and the third one is that ma'am we should not overdo with respect to essay in last year what i did was i used to incorporate on 12 to 15 dimensions that is overdoing and also incorporate more number of quotes that is overdoing but this time i used to manage the perfect balance between quotes and also dimensions and another aspect what i used to tell is that ma'am ma'am giving an out of box thing with respect to essay what if like this i will put a question mark but by telling that uh, it is an out of box thinking i could uh, make the evaluate thing that it's a unique essay but i should o- not overdo it by giving around 3 uh, to or uh, like 4 to 5 lines with respect to out of box thinking uh, with respect to topic that has been demanded my i make myself my essay to be unique ma'am so this make me to get a better score this year ma'am so different strategies with respect to handling essays different sets of fears uh but what we agree to is uh, having uh different styles of writing in both the essays ensuring that uh, there is a smooth transition between the different paragraphs written in the essay so that the essay doesn't look like a gs answer with points collated together that uh, transition or as he said the screenplay is very important so for some of us essay is easy for some of us uh, essays are fearful for some people it might be very scary but then at the end of the day we have to handle our demons we have to control it it is a we'll have to get over it 
so agreed agreed to that particular point all right so there is this always this uh, question for a person who is starting fresh with answer writing how to start where to start and what should be done what according to you should a person do to start writing first thing is to let go of the fear and start writing ma'am like you have to accept that everybody was once a beginner and your answer is not going to compare to a topper's copy stop comparing yourself with someone like when you are starting answer writing the only person you should compare yourself is yourself the second day when you write an answer if you are able to make one small improvement over the previous day that in itself is a success start with daily writing that would be my advice like take one to two questions that are current affairs related you can find so many questions online take a particular question try to write it if you think that no that doesn't have a key my be- the next bet best bet would be a previous year question which already has solutions in the net and so many other publications also put across that so what they can do is take one previous year question and try to write frame an answer to it say a static part would be a better place to start now for someone who's just starting answer writing why not start from the static part of history or geography or uh, environment or as such start writing and over the course of time try to correct yourself do a daily writing if you are starting fresh don't do a weekly writing do an everyday practice everyday practice changes things mom like automatically when you are trying to lose weight you go to gym every day you don't say i will go to gym this sunday next sunday i will go to gym same like it is a skill like pengade said it's it's a skill like you have to develop that skill you have to put in an everyday effort and consistent effort mom um the daily answer writing is the uh, crucial part it worked for me as well so uh, what i felt is ma'am there will be lot of inertia the first day is very difficult more than first day second day and third day is even more difficult so every time we get motivated we'll write the first day and second day we feel that okay we can avoid today so the, the second day and third day of daily answer writing is very important so people who are starting daily answer writing they should follow at least for 3 days to get the flow and ma'am apart from that ma'am uh, i used to brainstorm a lot of questions so i used to have a, i mean i have a preparation friend he's my companion so we both used to talk daily we used to talk questions every day so we compare our answers and we brainstorm many questions so that way i think um, the moment i see the question i can find out what is required in the question what is the exact demand and uh, what can i where, where can i get the points in some questions where i don't have direct points i can use some general knowledge of mine which uh, can be used for any kind of question so that could be achieved only with uh, daily answer writing in addition to we can also get the speed if you write questions daily we get the speed i think that is the way if one person has to improve their answer writing they have to start there how do you start with ma'am there's a famous quote that uh, a journey of 1000 miles starts with a single step by chinese philosopher uh, this daily answer writing practice is just a synonym for, for the particular quote especially the biggest problem which a particular beginner faces is that uh, i have not covered enough subjects i have not covered enough content in this one particular subjects to to the extent that i can start answer writing my uh, my answer to them is that uh, it's not that you have to cover all things even now as i already said we have as uh, our own deficiencies we have our own problems when it comes to some certain subjects so just after some basic reading of two or three months definitely they can start answer writing and the solution to this is that uh, start maybe they can start with current affairs especially uh, there is a one good video of shankar s academy doing daily news analysis in youtube and at the end of the video after discussing certain topics they are posting some questions so it's not that you don't uh, have to know that question and start directly writing it rather take a question study on this question spend 10 to 15 quality time browsing on the question prepare content and then start writing so the initial goal of answer writing is not about augmenting a content or augmenting a structure it's all about completing the stru- uh, answer within 10 minutes for 15 uh 10 marks and uh, sorry a uh, 7 minutes for 10 marks and f- uh, 10 minutes for 15 marks so that should be a starting goal and uh, augmenting the content as a structure may be done even in the 3 months uh, period between the prelims and mains when we go into rigorous uh, study schedule so we if we uh, start writing and then slowly look after our answers the previous answers then uh, nobody uh, you, you can't expect anyone to evaluate at, the, at least in the initial periods you are the best evaluator of yourself so start writing and then look for the feedbacks by yourself slowly improve on and uh, definitely it will have a greater impact when you start a main test series after completing the prelims madam ma'am uh, as everyone said ma'am daily answer writing is the first step ma'am so what i did was uh, first thing i had a mindset 
that I should be ready to incorporate what and all feedback I get from the evaluators or mentors with respect to daily anxiety so that it makes me to build my anxiety to a step by step manner. So I did I, I did use the IES parliament website ma'am where they used to post around 2 to 3 questions per day. So I used to write and get a proper feedback. So this feedback kept me motivated for the subsequent uh, like successive days ma'am. So if they give, tell that uh, keep writing like that it means that I have to improve my answer. So uh, actually at the end of the day what will happen ma'am after 10 days of consecutive writing you will have around 30 questions. So when you read back you can find the perfect transition of the answer writing style ma'am. That will uh, keep us motivating with respect to the day like uh, answer writing uh, strategy everything ma'am. Ma'am to add to that one more thing that somebody who is like starting answer writing should pay attention to is the question keyword. For discuss are you actually discussing when it comes to critically analyze are you analyzing the pros and cons correctly. So the first thing that you can start is try to address the exact demand the question puts to you when the question is asked check whether you are writing a relevant answer then you can uh, start writing fast then you can add content like everybody does content addition on the go like nobody is like uh, perfectly they know everything nobody knows uh, everything fully even in mains preparation even candidates who have cleared and also they also have this so with whatever like Vignesh said with whatever you have try to address the exact demand of the question once you are able to crack that particular lock then everything unfolds it's like that domino effect once that is in place everything will come to you when you do a daily answer and also I, I, I have kept a small thought ma'am like I should complete this 200 page uh, note with the entire number of like uh, questions and answers and when I completed the one book it motivated me to go for second book like that. So at the end of the day like actually help myself to in order to grow more stronger with respect to answer writing and finally I got 802 main mains this year ma'am. It is a huge uh, confidence when you just keep uh, improvising on your answers. So as you rightly mentioned somewhere there has to be a start if there is no start then there is no sense of completion at all. So starting and uh, overcoming that inertia, something which is creating that writing block for us. Sometimes it's a mental block. Sometimes it's the lack of content. Sometimes it's the fear that someone will evaluate and give us negative criticism. Sometimes it's the fear of whether we will go to that final day with our name come in the holy PDF. So many confusions, so many fears, but somehow somewhere we have to start. So the best way to start would be to actually put down uh, the hands with the pen onto the paper and start writing, isn't it? What was your strategy for uh, the compulsory regional language? Was it uh, scary for you? Uh, Ma'am, it was, it was not scary and it is actually not scary for all aspirants because you have these old question papers to go to where you will know exactly what needs to be addressed in terms of your preparation. Like uh, in case like there are people who switch to another language after the 10th standard, same was the case with me. So when you're writing after a long gap, it sure feels like it's a big task or something, but it's not actually so except for that essay part, which you have to think and write on your own. The other parts are uh, very much doable. So something that everybody can do is try to reach the regional newspaper. Uh, with articles relevant to polity and governance and environment so that you are exposed to all those terms like uh, every regional paper has two sections of translation or something so that part you are done with and the objective part you are done with the major chunk of your marks it's there for you along with that they already give you a passage for pressy writing only thing that you have to do it into a proper pressy writing and write and essay also try to write it without spelling mistakes ma'am. I think that is very much doable and the very important fact that needs to be addressed is this is a separate paper so you have to give it its due respect and justice and work on it complete the paper you can't take it like this will come for me why too there is no case of zero effort or over worrying about it it's like a balance like what needs to be done just do it and it's not a scary paper uh, ma'am for me it's telugu i am from andhra pradesh so uh, if any person can uh, read their language and can write it I think they should not, there's nothing to worry about the regional paper because we have to score very little marks. It's just a qualifying paper. So for me, uh, I used to take the PYQ papers, last year question papers, I used to practice them. Uh, the major worry for me is uh, writing the regional language in a legible way because it's been quite some time since we stopped writing uh, in the regional language. So that was the major concern. So I used to practice it and I also get worried, uh, for example, uh, in alphabets, there'll be two letters which pronounce in a similar way. So we have to find out which 
uh, the letter i should be mentioning there so as she said spelling mistake should not be there that comes only with the practice again so as as she said nothing to worry more here just to practice in the previous year papers if we can read and write our language is enough and for me ma'am uh, since it's a qualifying paper it has been given due respect everything so what i did was uh, before the examination i started to read all the tamil vernacular newspapers so i used to get a better uh, uh, like uh, analysis of the words and letters they use because it was it has been a long time like since i prepared for civil services and not used not used to read the tamil vernacular daily etc etc ma'am the second thing is, is that ma'am you have to start to read the tamil gs article uh, which is available in the internet so that we could get a glossary of all the translation of words like carbon sequestration and also sustainable development for the we have a separate uh, tamil exact words ma'am and vocabularies and uh, third one is that ma'am uh, we should uh, try to give around two pyqs and get it evaluated from another uh, mentors or any other tamil optional students ma'am so this is make sure that we we'll get a better confidence with respect to tamil language uh, compulsory papers <laughs> everyone has said many thing ma'am just to add one more point uh, when it comes to glossary or the vocabulary uh, one can study the uh, tamil nadu textbooks itself because uh, in the social uh, textbooks they at the end of the each chapter and the end of the book itself they have given a glossary of terms for example sovereignty means irayan mai democracy chananayagam these kind of words are given so that uh, when these words are uh, pop up in our exam and sometimes when writing essays we'll be struggling for put one word there we'll be knowing that english word but not, not the right uh, right tamil word so by studying those glossary, glossary it'll be easy for us to go ma'am we often see that uh, in some uh, papers the english word itself is converted to that uh, script of the regional language and it is written so many Trans- students transliteration we yeah, generally do it ma'am. that uh, is often seen um, and uh, sometimes what we can see is the grammar part whatever is there in the regional paper it gets uh, the same the same kind of questions are repetitively asked so if one prepares on the grammar part uh and the one prepares on the translation part clearing the 25 percentage marks is in is in the kitty it is for yes. sure and more than anything uh, we also get to see some students who are like really very confident about the regional paper that uh, without even completing the paper sometimes um it is like uh, of complete only some 100 or 150 marks Uh, and then uh, put their heads down and take rest inside the examination so as to save the energy for the next day's optional but uh, uh, at the end of the day an exam uh, which is of qualifying nature should be given its due respect and uh, uh, mostly the regional paper should be seen like uh, or the com- uh, compulsory english paper it should be seen like a warm up exercise because there'll be a um, a five day break after the gs4 where there is a lot of rusting not actual writing that is happening so i think it's also very vital to consider uh, and give it its due respect uh, for example uh, in hindi uh, as a regional language uh, there is the set of muhavre we get to choose we get to make explanations for that and use them in sentences sometimes these kind of questions they are very repetitive uh, very commonly used in um, so it's the same set of questions the same set of essay pressy writing and uh, reading comprehension and the translation passages which is asked for every student the regional they are people are tested on the common aspect only it's just that the language is different and we should have some basic proficiency in those kind of languages so in, that's all is necessary i uh, i also believe in that um thank you ma'am like i got just now updated two important things the first thing is that uh, the basic uh, qualifying marks for uh, like language paper is 25% i earlier 30 30 33% similar to csat a second thing is what you told ma'am uh, the same translation article has begun to all the regional languages just now i know that we'll move on to the next phase uh, of course uh, with respect to details of the answer writing you've kind of shared your inputs across the general studies across the essay etc uh often there is this question like what happens during the mains examination do we prepare for uh, close to 90 days sometimes it's 100 days this year of course it's very less time because uh, the exams got rescheduled right so how exactly what exactly was the mindset uh, a 6 hour marathon in terms of writing with just little break in between uh, university exams are only for 3 hours and for many people writing 6 hours is a little bit challenging especially because there are back to back exams so how do you handle it 
Ma'am, number one thing is most aspirants don't notice that tiredness in the anticipation of the paper that comes. The only thing that is in your mind is, I have to get this paper completed. And in case if an aspirant is someone who gets easily disturbed by sound or like external factors, something I would suggest is get used to it. I've never like uh, my second attempt like two mains was in 2020 in the midst of pandemic. So I was at home. I used to go sit in the terrace which had a roof and I used to start writing. There used to be temple festivals, church festivals, what not, everything, all the noise, Damaka would be going on and you don't have a fan or something. Get used to it. If you are someone who gets easily bothered by noise or external factors, a better thing to do would be don't go sit in all the exams and write. Like only mock exams I think are being conducted outside. But in general when you are doing a daily answer writing also don't sit in very enclosed spaces. Try to expose yourself to that kind of surrounding if that is possible. Second thing is when you are so keen on writing that answer everything you go deaf. Like... Uh, during optional, I think there was this full on procession that was anybody who has written in the Chennai center would know full on procession going on. Like many people didn't notice, but even if I noticed, I was able to overcome that and write it also. And there was a 10 minute power out like in the, I think during G, uh, some GS, GS paper. So what happened was people were turning, like many rooms didn't have proper windows or lighting. People were turning to where you get light and they used to start right. And advantage was that you got an extra five minutes because everything went black in certain rooms there was no windows also so when you get that extra five minutes you can make your paper even more unique you can give that push to yourself so the very important thing is focus on that paper focus on what you can do with that paper everything else you will forget ma'am first thing uh, i will be prepared that paper will be difficult the moment i see the question paper i will understand that the paper will be like this there's nothing to worry that will be my first thought. So even though they'll ask whatever they want, I'll feel like the question paper is same for everyone and everyone writes in the same way. Number two, ma'am, uh, the pain. First, I think SA, GS1, GS2 are manageable. GS3 and GS4, I'll definitely get pain, her ankle and uh, as well as fingers. I used to uh, use some pain relieving sprays. That is normal for, normal for everyone. Number three, ma'am, sleep. Many people I know, they won't sleep between GS2 and GS3. That entire night they'll keep on reading they won't get proper sleep so i won't do that i will generally uh, sleep properly ma'am and uh, fourth will be ma'am as she said there will be a lot of disturbances i remember in 2022 uh, i think in that in that year i think uh, the government here introduced a new song for waste collection it comes every day morning <laughs> so uh, when i was writing the exam that that was coming there continuously he was like, okay, it's a, it's an experience and I was, okay, I was writing. So that kind of disturbances will be there. If you sit in the closed space in academy or in a room, and if you put noise cancelling earphones and I will write main test series, uh, it is not a proper simulation. So that thing we have to be uh, accustomed to. These are the few things we should be concerned uh, if you are writing mains this year. I mean, in fact, uh, there can be any amount of disturbance in the exam hall. Just as he said, the uh, waste segregation song. Actually, what happened is that uh, the invigilator in that hall was not aware of the waste segregation song. And he started uh, yelling at all the students that someone has uh, got a phone inside. And he asked all of us to check the phones. And this is in spite of the exam, which is going very much tense and we are running out of time. And this was happening. And then we convinced him, sir, it is in the outside of the hall. We are not uh, accountable for it. And then, so this happens every day. But the problem, but the matter is that just as uh, the other two people said, you should be concerned on your own paper. Whatever happens in the other world, it's just the other world. You have to, to take the maximum output on this three hours which, is, which has been given. And the next one thing which I want to advise is that uh, the game is not over until it's over. I say this because many students uh, have the tendency of uh, leaving out of the prelims hall after completing GS saying that I have not done well in GS, I am not going to add in CSAT. So, is the, so was the case with myself, it seems like uh, during my optional paper, I didn't do my paper 1 well. But that doesn't stop me from revising for the paper 2. Of course, I had some hiccups. I was trying to overcome it in the first half hour. But later in the lunch period, I was started raising the paper too. So you, you, you may not know what happens to your paper. You may even get selected no, uh, thinking that I have not done well. So it all happens in this particular game. So trust that your game is not over until it's really over. For me, ma'am, uh, I loved the entire process of uh, mains, uh, UPSC mains examination, ma'am. The first thing is that uh, you sh uh, I loved the uh, like uh, point of like uh, expecting some uh, um, bouncer questions and some difficult questions, ma'am. Since I have wrote many uh, mains uh, like answer writing with respect to the UPSC, I was very good in uh, like answering the bouncer question. So that 
and I, each and every after each and every gs papers i used to take a very good number of like number of hours with uh, with respect to sleeping ma'am so this makes me to have better energy with respect to the next day answer writing and third one is that ma'am uh, you should not have a perfect uh, st- like uh, uh, planning that i should revise everything for the next gs paper because you can't do that because you have to uh, have a good number of sleep and also proper number of like uh, last minute revision that's it ma'am this you should uh, like get used to it and you should you should truly accept that that number that one fact ma'am and the second one is that ma'am uh, like another point is that ma'am as she said ma'am in chennai said right we got around 5 minutes of power cut i was extremely happy because i used to have a small amount of light in that uh, room and used to write like very fast i because i expected that after this like uh, they are anyhow they are going, going to give me around extra 5 minutes so it was like a game for me because i enjoyed the entire process the first thing you should try to enjoy the uh, entire process and second thing ma'am anyhow we have written the engineering semester exams which used to be like this only so the same thing have to repli- replicate so if you have the energy to enjoy it and if you have done enough number of mains test series you, we don't need to actually worry about the continuous six hours ma'am so basically ma'am we have to be prepared for everything so for example sometimes they won't allow certain kind of watches once i went to exam they said this water bottle is not allowed i said it is transcluent wire not allowing no sir only white color uh, plastic kinle bottle is only allowed so and certain type of watches are not allowed so that day we can't lose our temper uh, because of these kind of restrictions because people there will implement the rules very mechanically they might not know the purpose of the rule so we should be prepared for everything that is the best way to go to exam because uh, for us it can be a very major experience for invigilators there it is just one other exam they are, st- are invigilating for other staff it's just a routine procedure which happens every year for students it's very difficult to accept this fact but for other machinery for upsc for everything it's just a routine exercise they are doing it for tens of years so we should be more accustomed to all these kind of um, what i would say tensions uh, and we should be prepared for them one doubt like whether in our upsc they mentioned that we should not bring any non transparent bottles like that it's not very the rule is very not okay, clear because for Nothing me ma'am that is mentioned and that's where ambiguous ambiguity comes in and that is where they go <laughs> for me, the stricter rule so that no one will be punished the there the metal bottles were weren't allowed like except the translucent bottles like even colored bottles weren't allowed in the city uh, it's actually very similar even when we go to certain airports some airports they allow us to carry our water bottles if it is less than uh, half a liter some other uh, they don't even allow us to take the water bottles so i think uh, case to case basis uh, yes, the centers take a exactly, discretion ma'am. yes yes, yes. There actually are not ma'am prop- yes, broad ma'am. guidelines and, uh, to, is to conduct a fair examination and ensure that everybody gets yes, their ma'am. due so uh, the I idea th- is simple ma'am that the, the water bottle the inside of water bottle should be visible yes. it could be translucent or it, it can be transparent but uh, to go on safer side they say only white color bottles are allowed so Uh, and I remember once they allowed me a Casio watch, which is digital watch. Uh, when next time I took the same watch, they said this watch is not allowed. I said last time you allowed this watch. That is, di- <laughs> it's different that year, sir. They said. So there could be many kind of restrictions that day, but uh, we have to maintain our calm and composure throughout the exam for many days. So uh, that could come only with practice, I would say. And uh, generally, it is only analog watches that we are supposed to carry to any examination as such. one another interesting incident which uh, students generally come up with is uh, uh, in the process of writing mains they come for this signature yes uh, yes sir and uh, the invigilators also have to put their signatures so generally it is not exactly 180 minutes that you actually get maybe it's 165 or 170 minutes of actual time the rest of the time is it it's not generally there though it looks that it is there yes, 180 ma'am. minutes is actually not there isn't it and it's a very crucial part we cannot make error in while filling the roll number or the booklet number if we, if we mess it up then the whole exam messes up so we should be very careful there too definitely the the roll number part which we write initially yes, actually yes, that ma'am. time it's before the examination starts but this is in between the in examination between, yes, the booklet in number and all we ma'am. may like uh, like uh, lost the amount of like continuity with respect to answer writing yes ma'am Uh, some people you keep writing something and then you lose track of where you are and yes, then you ma'am. just go you zone out and then you have to once again pull pull everything and then come back to the paper and then sit and it is sometimes a little challenging but then as he said we always expect calm and composure definitely and one more thing ma'am uh, it generally happens to me when i'm writing exam after say 7 to 8 questions at the end of one hour i will be in that writing mode i'll be writing i'll be zoned out 
means i will not be very conscious about what what i am writing but i'll be writing so that is when my quality of answers will come down so if it if it is happening to anyone what they can do is they will take i'll take a 10 second break i'll eat chocolate i'll drink water i'll come back to my complete senses and i'll start writing again so this is what used to happen to me same thing ma'am for every 30 minutes i have to take a cup of like sip of water that's it it's my like time ma'am uh, but um, sometimes when we write answers when we see a question and then we take like say a minute or a minute and a half to compose the answer or make the points for that and then we start writing so for every answer there is a break that is possible i think some people do that as well isn't it like, yes uh, that also helps to take your hand off the paper right all right okay so there there were a set of intangibles like this but then uh, there is also this uh, question which i which really comes at the back of my mind we've all handled failures how do you handle the pain of failure sometimes it's the failure of the exam sometimes it's something which happens in any relationships that we have with one of our relatives or with any other relationship that we have so have you had any experiences like that how did you actually uh, pull it all together the first thing is that ma'am uh, analyzing two different uh, issues with respect to the emotional part and rational part ma'am over the years because uh, uh, for the previous attempts i didn't clear prelims so what i did was i took the emotional part and buried it outside so i uh, thought that what should i do in the next few months uh, in order to mess up with respect to prelims and mains so i try to strategize my mains preparation and also my mental uh, like uh, uh, mental stability so that i could uh, like pass my next few or one or two months with respect to the preparation so this uh, uh, point of separating my emotional part and also my rational thoughts will may made me to better like equip myself with respect to answer writing and also mains preparation ma'am so i think this has to be done ma'am this attitude of uh, like uh, calm uh, like uh, maintain a calm and composure after the post prelims time ma'am this, this will make someone to like make him emotionally stable ma'am ma'am uh, i have been writing this exam for a very long time so i have seen many failures so especially last year uh, when the results came out on i think may 23rd last year i was expecting i will be in the list but uh, i was not there i missed by a very narrow margin that is two marks and i scored very less in interview so uh, i was feeling very sad so what happens is ma'am at, at one point of time when we see lot of failures uh, we will start fearing to dream even dream about it so we start fearing that if i dream it won't happen so that is the biggest lowest point i would say a aspirant can face so that is when uh, what happens is ma'am that intangibles what we can say or whatever it is uh, the family and friends and mentors they will keep on motivating for example in my sake my mother my sister my brother in law they were there. they were like after the uh, result went bad they said like okay nothing to worry what happens it's okay you can write again or you do whatever you want or you go to some trip we will we will afford it so that is the kind of motivation they gave and apart from that ma'am uh, coming out of failures which should be more of an individual thing as well i should be in a position to say that okay i have seen the failure i can again fight that comes only when we have something to look up to for example right from my first attempt in 2018 uh, every attempt the persons who were close to me have cleared so whenever any person who is close to me or a person i am seeing clearing this exam i feel that if they can clear this exam i can clear this exam and then there is family who have cleared this exam my my system so i get a feeling that okay if they can clear this exam i can clear this exam so that kind of thing always kept me motivating despite the failures ma'am according to me acceptance is the first step ma'am failure is an occupational hazard in this particular preparation and we are all prone to failures so first accept that and then second is that uh, there should be lot of introspection about ourselves we should find some ways uh, which can uh, take out from that uh, depression of failure and put into the normal position for me it was like listening to music some motivational songs for example you know, there's a song called spirit of jersey where the particular actor after getting uh, getting his name into the cricket uh, list he goes uh, takes a bike goes to the railway station goes to the other part of the railway station and screams out saying that i have finally cleared it likewise i'll be imagining there will be a moment where i'll be seeing my name in the holy pdf so i'll be shouting loud that i have cleared this exam one fine day so that positive manifestation coupled with some amount of uh, efforts like let it let it be listening to songs doing some yoga pranayama it's all about to them it's very much unique to that particular personality and finally 
sleep is the best cure uh, like every day uh, one can have some bad days or uh, like one may get a critical feedback from the main test series uh, and uh, think that i have put all my efforts but finally i have scored very less marks so one should hope that this day will end somehow by this uh, particular sunset and there is another new day waiting for me so i'll sleep this and uh, get overcome this and the next day i'll be more enthusiastic more energetic to face the more new challenges and uh, opportunities so that's how uh, i have handled my ups and downs man No, I am curious to know whether you screamed in a railway station. <laughs> no, I have not. But I just uh, watched that video on the... Uh, just when the result came, I was emotionless. But in order to create more emotions, after the night, I, I watched the video by myself. And uh, my, I myself recreated the moment in the home. I did not scream. But uh, there, there were uh, some inner relief and satisfaction while seeing that video and relating that uh, I have done this myself by today. So that happened. it is often said that when you clear the attempt uh, when you clear the exam in the first attempt it is happiness and after that it is only relief peace man peace peace in a peace that is when scream comes man we scream to get the relief you know no no like we should understand why we started this journey that's a very important thing man for me it's a very personal question man because upsc actually taught me how to handle failure Uh, before upsc i hadn't had a moment where i was stopped by failure be the 10th or 12th my college i graduated with distinction also and i was placed in a company i was a good pay and everything so i had to leave that i left that made the choice and i started this preparation so i thought that maybe 2 to 3 years adik mela agad so that was confidence i had in me and all so the first prelims was a hit the next mains uh, actually at that time my father had a major cardiac arrest and i had to spend the two july and august of that mains in the hospitals itself so i was like completely heartbroken but then like he said you know like there are people that help you out my parents used to encourage me they're like okay it's be- it's okay try the next prelims so the next prelims i tried it was during covid i tried but i couldn't get into the interview like after interview i couldn't get into the selection list and after that i had plenty of personal setbacks with the during the course of the preparation so that two years was very eye opening for me and i remember this uh, quote like many famous celebrities also have said this like adutha vinadigal vaithirkum arpudangal eralam like that why not like he said the next moment may bring a lot of miracles into your life i started believing and buying more into that and like if something is destined for me and in the power of destiny if something is destined for me it is going to meet me when i go there if it is not destined for me then another path but that hard work or the work that i have to put into it it, it goes irrespective of it no matter what the hard work has to go into it so that is how i handled failure like no matter what happens let me focus on the process trusting the process trying to be more detached from the results and being more um, into the process like i said try to love the process Yes, Yamas Tony has said, trust the process, results will follow. That's yes, what man. works for life. Yeah. And also what she told me, like peace thing. That the day when we see your name in the final merit list, the next, uh, at the next moment, what you will think that uh, next year we don't want to attempt for UPSC, <laughs> that peace. After that, you will not have to After that, only we will analyze like, which uh, service you are going to get, whether we have to apply or not like that. Man. Very no true, very Lakshmi true. <laughs> no more Lakshmi Khan, no more Spectrum is the biggest yes. relief and aspect can get these days. So we are going to the final leg here. What according to you Vignesh is uh, the key takeaways from your preparation and from your journey that you would want to tell people to follow or uh, which you would want to give as some suggestions for people who aspire to write names this year or the subsequent year Ma'am the key takeaway is that the preparation is worth it ma'am like uh, this preparation has changed my personality to a greater extent especially i was a naive boy who didn't even have the habit of studying newspaper i didn't even know the basic minimum knowledge of india's history society or economy but once i am into this preparation the way i see an issue uh, bringing about perspectives of various issues has greatly changed and this i myself introspected during my personal test preparation so the pr- matter is that uh, Uh, everybody can enter into this preparation in fact uh, there is a concept of conscription like like every mandatory army service like this like that there can be mandatory preparation for this particular exam because uh, one needs to, one uh, uh, at the end of the journey one has an immense knowledge about uh, uh, everything which they see so i think that is the key takeaway which has molded my personality to a greater extent in the last 2 to 3 years ma'am ma'am the key takeaway for me is uh, the kind of consistency and discipline this preparation drills into you it's like anybody who is part of the process will inadvertently end up there you become more consistent you become more disciplined in whatever you are doing 
and uh, another thing is like you will identify people who are there for you till the end because my journey was in short it was a span of 6 years uh, like i can pick my family members and friends who have stood with me through all those times i i don't think this question is alien to anybody adutha enna panuvinga inna exam clear pannalaya eppo ungalku kalyano it's like very common and you get used to all those things and sometimes when you're not able to defend yourself to such questions your family and your friends come in ungalku like, enna like my friends used to like uh, cook up some quirk ups to tell to those people and all and you have somebody to go and like vent it out i think uh, through the process you will identify people who are your people like who will stand by you through thick and thin that is what the upsc journey teaches you ma'am i like to discuss about the um, person study with respect to working aspirants ma'am for example since uh, 2020 i have been working in the government so there has been a change of preparation strategy before 2020 and also post 2020 ma'am so any working aspirant who needs to prepare continuously for with respect to civil service that ma'am he have to uh, properly align his timeline daily the, the first thing is that uh, the preparation time for me uh, what i will personally suggest that if someone is working and also want to prepare simultaneously with respect to civil services he should only prepare at the morning time because after getting home post 6:30 or 7:30 forming with respect to 8:30 or 9:30 we can't study for the next 30 minutes because first thing we'll have migraines and we'll sleep at the desk only so after that we'll just have like some out dinner post that we just prepare for only one uh, one hour only because after we have to sleep and have to get ready for the next day's work so what i did was ma'am daily after getting home around 8 to 8:30 i used to sleep that's it and uh, i used to wake up at 3:30 to 4 uh, o'clock for the past 3 years and from 4 o'clock till 9 o'clock i used to prepare continuously so after using that strategy, strategy if i compare with my fellow uh, competitors i used to think that i'm getting a salary and also prepare continuously religiously for 5 hours whereas my uh, like uh, uh, competitors although they prepare uh, for around 12 to 13 hours they use their efficiency for around 8 hours so it has a benefit win to win situation for me the second thing is that ma'am there is a situation called as good day and bad day this has to be accepted the good day is that where you can get around 3 to 4 hours per day for preparation the bad day is that uh, where you won't get at least one not to uh, read the newspaper in a subsequent day so you have to accept that in any uh, working aspirants lifestyle one will get good uh, bad days for around like 2 to 3 days per month so we have to accept that because if if you don't accept that and think that today i even don't like i didn't even get a time to read the newspaper this will affect your next day's morning schedule for your preparation so this has to be taken in mind and third one is that ma'am uh, for any working aspirant he, ha- he has to have some sort of uh, short term goals and long term goals although you can't complete any short term goals or long term goals you should have it in mind because uh, for any aspirant like uh, who is preparing continuously he can complete one mock paper and analyze that within one day but for any working aspirants he have to take around like one day he can solve any mock test but for analyzing that he will take around 3 days so our entire 4 days preparation will be equal to a yes, uh, uh, candidate who is preparing continuously for one day so you have to accept this situation and uh, the uh, final thing is that ma'am you have to accept that we are unique and uh, the one best thing what i had is that ma'am killer instinct killer instinct means na adu sadikkanona edutte theeruven idukkaga na enna 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 thyagam pannuven like the ruthless way like a ruthless determination to succeed and win in the thought on the like every working aspirant should have in their mind and should bear in their mind in order to push themselves even in the harsh time of like balancing the working and also like uh, uh, preparing for civil services ma as sharan said uh, this exam shows us we can fail in multiple ways uh, most of the people at least 80% of the people will fail in the initial attempts because uh, the first attempt success rate, success rate is very less so we have to accept the fact that failure will be seeing mostly and we have to keep ourselves motivated for example ma'am uh, in last attempt i missed by my mr sevils by 2 marks i missed reservist by 1 mark i missed uh, sai uh, that one i missed by 0.2 marks if i have stopped there i wouldn't have cleared three exams in one go in the next year i cleared group 1 service again civils and forest service so it is it depends on the person how to keep how they will keep themselves motivated here uh, the family and friends are the crucial partner i was blessed i am blessed to have a very good family who have been supporting my preparation for a, for quite some time so uh, i would like to tell to the parents that without you guys 
no aspirant can clear this exam everyone needs their family support apart from that ma'am the second important one is friends uh, i feel that every person should have friends both in upsc and not upsc to discuss upsc problems we need upsc friends and to come out of this problem we have to talk with non upsc guys to know what is happening outside the upsc so in that uh, case again i am blessed to have both friends from both the areas uh, uh, i mean as i said before I, my friend prabhakaran we used to talk every day we will discuss whenever i am feel whenever i feel low i told i'll, I'll tell him that uh, bro i can't clear this exam i won't clear this exam he will say like last week also said the same thing he will read again tomorrow so don't, <laughs> so don't worry tomorrow you will feel better so those kind of things we do for each other so i think uh, the individual aspect family and friends these are the uh, important things we should have to clear this exam that is what i understood in last many years of preparation so we have understood uh, different aspects of uh, preparation life for some uh, it has been quite quick for some it has taken a, a plenty of time but uh, there have been a lot of life lessons that we have learned both uh, uh, from the upsc with the upsc and without the upsc so it has given us a lot of uh, experiences as such so uh, viewers uh we will be having a separate uh, strategy session wherein uh, each of these uh, toppers would uh, share their experiences with specifics of uh, general studies essay writing and uh, their optionals we will also be looking to have some telegram live series and uh, they will be helping through a service motive uh, to all the candidates who would wish to take their guidance as a part of uh, their mentoring that they would look to do with the uh, main test series uh, uh, mentoring part as well as the evaluation part until they are joining their uh, services as such so if you have any further queries or you would wish to connect uh, with uh, any of them you can reach out to us at uh, moksha m o k s h a at that is shankar i a s s h a n k a r i a s acad a c a d dot i n we will be displaying these details also in this particular video so you can reach out to us and uh, i'm rajita i've been their uh, tutor their mentor and uh, i've enjoyed this part of uh, not just interacting with them or uh, uh, training them uh, they've all been uh, more than my students they've all been my children and uh, i very fondly recall the n number of moments that have been there uh, in their classes in terms of uh, their activities outside the classes in terms of uh, the grooming part that has gone into making each of uh, each and every one of them they have put in a lot of effort so to all the people uh, who wish to take up upsc or who are even considering taking up upsc who might be in some private sector or who might think of joining any private sector or who would want to start up their own businesses but whatever it is please keep going on each of them have a different life story but at the end of the day this examination offers the scope for each and every one who is a part of this particular journey to have that one life changing signature that one signature that you put in into one of those uh, schemes in terms of the implementation that you get to do can change many people's lives this exam changes the life of your of the candidates and the people who are around them but it also over a period of time changes the life of so many other people who are a part of india as such and who get to interact with uh, people who are in foreign services as well so here i am signing off from you with three prospective ias officers and one ifs officer so we look to get back to you once again if you have any queries please reach out to us thank you one and all thank you so much for giving us your time and thank you for encouraging and motivating each and when every one of us we are very grateful for all your wishes and support thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you, thank you.